Hello everyone and welcome to SUNUP. I'm Lyndall Stout. We join you today from the heart of the OSU campus where the focus is the rural economic outlook for both Oklahoma and the United States in the year ahead. We'll have much more on this topic a little bit later on the show, but first we're kicking things off with Todd Bauman, who is talking with Curtis Hare about some of the concerns when you feed failed crops to your livestock. Over the past couple weeks, we've been talking about using failed summer crops as forage in regards to nutrition and some other considerations. But Todd, when it comes to herbicides and pesticides, there's some other issues that producers need to think about. Yeah, so I mean, this is kind of an unusual year in the fact that basically all of our summer crops are gonna be, have potential well to be failed out, which in, and one of the first things that producers need to do is make sure that they're clear with their insurance company, uh, that they've got everything solved as far as that's concerned and have the ability to be able to turn that into a forage or feed value. So they wanna make sure and check with that, make sure all the regulations, all the boxes are checked. Uh, Cause the last thing we'd hate to see is at, I guess, insult to injury and the fact that they would lose an insurance check because they didn't have uh, all of the regulations followed. So that's one of the biggest thing. Following that is gonna be what pesticides were used on that crop. And, and one of the real concerns is not just for that individual producer that may be turning that into a feeder forage, but someone that may be using or purchasing that hay or forage from them, uh, making sure that it's following all of the label regulations as far as the proper use of that feed or forage. So what about herbicides? Uh, herbicides are going to be one of the biggest ones, especially this year. Uh, with the failed crop, probably not as many fungicides or insecticides went out, uh, even though they want to make sure of that and make sure that there's not an issue there. Uh, but most of this crop probably only got a herbicide on it this year. And the biggest issue is each individual label is different in regards to what you can or can't do uh, from a feed or forage or a hay standpoint. And even within that specific label, it may vary between crops. Uh, say, for instance, there may be a seven day restriction on something like corn or grain sorghum. There may be a 30 day restriction or you can't even feed, say, cotton or soybean. So in, like, what about uh, time of application? Is that gonna factor in at all? Uh, yes, hugely, because in some cases, uh, it's gonna be like, say, uh, cannot feed or, or, or cut for hay. Uh, until 30 days after that last application. And again, that's gonna vary with each of those, those product labels. Uh, the other thing that we learned recently, or at least that I learned, was if there's nothing specifically on the label about that feeding or haying that specific crop, then that's an off-label use of that. So if it doesn't mention that at all as a potential option, then you cannot use that product for a feed or hay source. Now, are there like are there anything other considerations regarding the labels that they need to be thinking of? Yeah, I think I think two of the most important things when we're talking about these labels is number one, it's not say the active ingredient, say 2,4-D atrazine glyphosate. It's that specific herbicide that was applied on that field. So if a Roundup was applied versus a generic form of glyphosate, you've got to have the label of that specific product to look at it because it could be different. Uh, the other thing uh, is premixes. Say just because atrazine has a specific label and just because Roundup has a specific label, but if you were to use a premix of those two products that's sold as a premix of both of those products, that could change as well. And we definitely see that. And in regards to producers who are buying the hay and maybe not really sure, you know, kind of what situation they're gonna be in. Is there any testing available for that? Uh, not specifically. That's where they need to ask the specific source of that hay or forage, what was applied on that field, ask them if they know, if they don't, then go to that label and look at it and determine it. The other thing is, is, is if you do have questions, you know, cause these labels can be somewhat confusing and a little bit hard to find in some cases, uh, make sure and check with your county educator because he can definitely help you alleviate some of those concerns, get through some of that uh, understanding of that label and definitely help you with that. All right, thanks Todd. Todd Bauman, OSU Extension Weed Scientist. And if you'd like some more information about how to find your local county extension office, just go to sunup.okstate.edu.